Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to Ground Considerations for PCB Layout of Mixed Signal Designs. And this will be part one in either a two-part or three-part series. Just depends how much, how long it takes me to get through this stuff. Before I get started, I'll just mention, uh, check out Forstronics.com for information on Forstronics design, manufacturing, and training services. And if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about ground and more specifically, we're gonna be talking about ground planes and PCBs. Now, if, you're not work, if you've never worked with a PCB and you're just more of a prototype in person, this, this could still be useful, but it's gonna be heavily focused on PCBs. Uh, so let me start off by just saying what is ground. And I, I looked around for a couple definitions. I, I found this one, I liked it just because it talks about both current and voltage. So ground is where the return current flows to complete a circuit and a reference point for zero volts. So I think the second part of that definition probably resonates with most people. The first part is something that's gonna be important for this tutorial is the fact that not only does current flow in wires or traces, but if you have some kind of ground bus, ground wire, ground plane, there's current flowing in that. And that's something we're gonna to need to keep in mind because different return currents could actually interfere with each other. And so we're gonna talk about that in this tutorial. And you know, bullet number two, I'm just saying that we typically think of ground as, as an ideal, you know, perfect ground state, meaning zero impedance. But in reality, ground is not ideal. And so you have to consider parasitic inductance, parasitic resistance in the in the ground plane. And then if the ground plane is near something or has sharp bends in it, you can have to worry about capacitance as well. So this video is really for people, if you're designing a design that either has high accuracy or high speed ADC measurements, maybe you're working with low level analog signals or audio signals, or maybe you have some kind of a RF microwave receiver on there. Those are the type of designs that can be susceptible to problems in the ground plane or interference caused by currents in the ground plane. And that's a lot of what we're gonna talk about today. And then of course, those designs get even more tricky when you combine them with things like high-speed digital signals, right? So if you're making real accurate ADC measurements on your design, but you also have to send those measurements off using USB, you know, a USB high-speed digital signal can be noisy in your circuit. Same with uh, switch-based power supplies or DC to DC converters, you know, power converters that are basically using a switch mode design where they chop up a signal into a pulse width modulated signal. You know, if you're working with a high precision ADC or a real fast ADC, you probably don't even want to have these in your design. But if you do, uh, we'll, we'll talk about ways to mitigate the, the effects of these noisy signals. Okay, like I said, we're going to be talking about ground, but with a focus on ground planes on PCBs. And so what is a ground plane? Typically on a PCB, we don't want to just use a trace as ground, right? We want ground plane to be, we want ground to be big and we want to cover the, as much as the board as possible. And in fact, we also want it flat. And, and why do we want this? Well, the bigger the ground plane, the more copper, the flatter it is, the less inductance and resistance you're going to have. And if you've ever seen real high precision, low inductance audio cables, they're flat like ribbons. So the flat shape helps reduce parasitic inductance. Also, with a large flat ground plane, we can shield our circuits from EMI, you know, electromagnetic interference that might be coming from outside the circuit. Ground planes, big flat ground planes are a great way to trap that, that interference from not getting on your, on your uh, important traces. And so I'm showing a cutout here of a ground plane. Now, this is a PCB board I made, uh, prototype one and it's two layers, so it has traces and a ground plane on the top, traces and a ground plane on the bottom. Now, this is meant to be an example. If you have a very high precision circuit, you may have a multiple layers, more than two layers, and you may have the ground plane on a separate layer, so on and so forth. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in part two, but if you look at this design and you're not familiar with ground planes, the area in pink is all ground, right? You can see that we do have some traces. This is a 12 volt trace, but the trace is cut off from ground. So everywhere there's not a trace, there's the ground plane. And same on the bottom, the bottom is in blue. Whenever there's not a trace, you're gonna have a ground plane. And then you have things like these vias that connect the two ground planes together. 
Okay, and uh, I wanted to show this map of the ocean with, with ocean currents because I think it's a great analogy to how to think about the ground plane. You know, if I jump back to this previous slide, you know, we know that current's going to flow through this 12 volt trace, right? And, and here's my 3.3 volt trace. Current's going to flow through there. But a lot of times what we don't think about is the fact that the current has to return to its source, right? You have either electron flow or hole flow, depending on how you look at current flow. But this current that flows out from this will eventually have to return in the ground plane to this device. And so it's easy for us to know intuitively that we know that current's flowing through these traces, but we also have to remember there's current flowing all around the ground plane as well. And that's why I thought this ocean is a good analogy to that, right? You have all these, you may look at the ocean from a distance and it just looks like this static body of water, but really you have all these currents, underlying currents in the ocean. And if a, one current is running into another, you could slow it down or it can interfere. And that's the same thing with the ground plane, is if we have a noisy digital current returning through the ground plane and it crosses the path of a current caused by you know an ADC measurement we're trying to do, a high precision one, we're going to interfere with that measurement. And I'll show an example of that later. And then also, the land masses are a good analogy too because a lot of times our ground planes, especially if we only have a two layer board, they're not contiguous, right? There's going to be breaks in them. And so it's important to note, although the, the current may want to flow directly in a straight line back to its return source, it sometimes can't because of breaks in the ground plane or other boards or things like that. So current's going to have to flow around these different obstacles inside the ground plane. Okay, with that in mind, here's a real simple example of a ground where I want to show the return current. So these boards are meant to be a ground plane and this is meant to be a very pseudo uh, PCB layout design, very simple. So we have a power source, which could be you know, a microcontroller, could be a regulator, anything like that. Currents flowing out of it, this black line is supposed to be a trace. It flows into this resistor and this resistor is connected to the ground plane and I'm just using a schematic symbol to show that. Same with this power source, it also has to be connected to ground. So once again, it's very intuitive that if this power source is on and it's outputting power, current's gonna flow through this trace and through the resistor to ground. But a lot of times, like I said, we don't think about, well, what happens to the current after that? Well, it has to return to the source, right? It has to be a complete circuit. So inside the ground plane, there's gonna be a current path that goes back to the power source. Now, in this situation, it's pretty intuitive to think about, well, we know where the current's gonna flow, it's just a straight line, but in a much more busy PCB circuit, it may not be a straight line flow. Now, if we go to the second example, it's the same circuit, except there's a cut in the ground plane. So this could be a trace from a different circuit, or it could just be maybe these PCB boards are separated, or you're trying to isolate these two ground planes, whatever. But the whole idea here is now in this situation, the current has to take a much longer route. And what's important to note is if it's taking a longer route, we, we may not realize that this current has to go all the way around, but if we have a sensitive measurement over here and it, this current crosses the path of that measurement, it can interfere with it. Also, if, if current has to take large loops around the PCB board, you know, the parasitic inductance in the board can almost make the board act like an antenna and you can have EMI issues in your board where your board is actually radiating uh, emissions and, and there's regulations against that. I, I'm not going to talk much about EMI just to point out that that is also a something to watch out for if you have uh, ground not good ground plane layout and you have currents flowing all over the board. But once again, the whole point here is to say that the ground plane there's currents flowing in the ground plane, and when you're working with sensitive measurement circuitry, you have to sort of visualize where's that current flowing. All right, what I'd like to do now is show you that I'm not making this stuff up. So I took a, a, a prototype board, and what I'm doing is I just sort of hack the board, and I, you know, I found the, the, the power trace, and so I'm inputting a low-level 100 millivolt DC signal into one end of the board, it flows through a trace, and then I'm measuring it with a high resolution digital voltmeter or DMM on the other end, right? And then I'm putting in a random 
pulses that, that are supposed to represent a random digital signal that's coming in the other side of the board or on the side of the board and it's going to cross perpendicular over the, the, the trace that's going to be carrying our, our sensitive signal and then I just have some resistors to terminate where that, that signal will end. And w one thing I want to point out is none of these traces are connected. You know, if we connected a DMM to, between these two traces, we would read, you know, infinite ohms because they're not connected. But we're going to see that the fields, the parasitic effects caused by the two current paths crossing each other in the ground plane is going to lead to interference. Okay, so there's the circuit that I'm going to test. I'm going to pan up and first I'm going to show you my two-channel function generator. So this is a two-channel function generator. Channel one, I'm just generating a DC level, constant static DC level, 100 millivolts. On channel two, you'll see later, that's where I'm generating my random digital signal. And, and so that's coming out channel two. So that's the output of the function generator. And then I'm showing you my high accuracy DMM. And you can see there's 100 millivolts and this, even the, you know, the, the microvolt range is pretty stable. So we're reading a pretty stable signal, you know, not much jumping there. Great signal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to channel two. So I, I hit channel two. So here I'm turning the output on on channel two and channel two is just doing thousand kilobytes. So it's not even a high speed signal. And then I have five millivolts peak to peak and it's just a random bit stream. So I'm pressing play on that and we can see, we can clearly see that it's affecting our signal. I should just let it play. But even up to um, the 100 millivolts digit, it's affecting that signal. So clear interference there. What I do next is I change it to one volt peak to peak. So I'm lowering the amplitude and not as much as an effect, but we can definitely see it in the microvolt range. It's interfering with our signal. Then I even go to 200 millivolts peak to peak. And even that, is having an effect. We can see these digits are jumping around where they weren't before. And just to show you that this is not smoke and mirrors, I go back down to, I turn channel two back off and there's our steady 100 millivolt signal. All right, well you saw it firsthand of how a noisy or high speed digital signal or any signal can interfere with a precision measurement signal. So we need to be aware of our ground plane how it's laid out and where currents are flowing. And we'll talk about some strategies for that in part two. And this is just a reminder, you know, when do you need to worry about this? Well, if you have nothing but low level digital signals or you're making measurements with an ADC that don't have to be that accurate, you don't have to maybe consider this kind of stuff. But if you're making high accuracy measurements, working with very precision analog signals, maybe audio signals, or if you're making high speed measurements, so on and so forth, you need to be aware of the effects here, you know, especially when you're working with high speed digital signals in that same design or circuit or even switch based power supplies. Okay, uh, I read a lot of good references on this and this is something a lot of times whenever I get onto a design where, you know, I have these type of measurements, I'll often review documents like this to help remind myself. And here's a, a bunch of different things I reviewed. I would recommend this top one. And in fact, I, I, I'll have a link for it in the description of the video. All right, that's it for part one. If you are someone who is an expert in ground planes and you feel I missed something or you have something to add, please do. Please add, add more comments. And if you have any questions, use the comments section below. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching.